A beautiful morning. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Are we live? I think we're live. You think so? I do. It's alive! alive. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wednesday edition of the Mike Myers Ask Mike Anything live stream. The goal of this live stream is to provide those of us who are isolated by the coronavirus an opportunity to continue our studies on CompTIA certifications. Uh, we, uh, we usually, we start at 2 o'clock Central Daylight Time and we go till 4. Unfortunately today, both Scott and I have obligations and we only can do one hour today. So we're only, it's going to be a shorter version today. We'll only do an hour. So uh, if you have questions, you should ask them now. Yeah, you, we need to get the <laughs> questions in early this time. So, uh, yeah, so, so please do that. Um, we take questions on anything. Leave religion and politics out, but... Uh, of course, our bailiwick is, is CompTIA certifications, specifically IT Fundamentals, A+, plus, Network+, plus, and Security+, plus, but we can go well beyond that and have devolved into food discussions and uh, gaming and all sorts of weird things. I like sax and violins. Violins. Vi really? Sax, sax mm -hmm. and, vi and violins. <laughs> we could talk about that. We could. I don't, I don't actually play either one. <laughs> Walking away, walking away. <laughs> All right. So anyway, guys, the uh, this is how this works. What you got to do is to ask us questions. Just type them into the chat window there. Uh, so I'm going to pop out my chat window as I always do when we get started here. And not only is my chat window popped out, I am also going to flip it from top chat to live chat. Oh, yep. I hadn't done that yet either. And I'm going to toggle on my timestamps. And that you do by clicking on the three little dots. So it's not an ellipse. There's another name for that thing. He doesn't know how to use the three shells. Was that a cultural reference? That was a, I don't know, is it cultural? It's a movie reference. <laughs> oh, wow, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Patricia. Okay, so Telewit and Patricia have, have uh, great advice for how to make the, the live stream work. Uh, Telewit says, talk twice as fast so we can get the full two hours of content in one hour. <laughs> Patricia says she's just gonna slow down her stream so it'll last for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Both of these are great advice. If we <sighs> talk twice as fast and you slowed down the stream, then it really would be a two hour show. Yeah, but that, uh, oof. <laughs> and I'd be sounding like this. <laughs> Hello, my name And for is our Paul. friends in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Tolwitz says today is National Donald Duck Day. Oh my gosh. David Rush, holy, Mo holy Moses, I have been deceived. It's music. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So Zach, if you're still on, hi, bye, we'll see you later. Thanks for dropping in and at least saying hello. Nick Pothast. Pothast? He was here early, 1247. Yeah. 1247, I wonder, if, I wonder if he's still around. I don't know. Is there a way to determine who's on right now? Participants? Oh, he's in and gone. Push. Teacher Russell's in. He's being kind of quiet there. Yeah, Nick is, Nick is definitely out. No worries. Okay. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. Jean, Jean Dorival is here. Yep. People, are, people are crawling and in Parrish, slowly as usual. Alan Duggan. Crazy Patricia Homebody Grace. Girl. OB1. Yep. Rocky Call. Rocky Co. Rocky Co. Rocky, you got to have to give us a proper pronunciation of your name. Yeah, absolutely. Because Scott will remember. I won't, but Scott will remember. <laughs> I will. And it'll be great. Tolo with Demolition Man. Was it Demolition Man? Wesley Snipes was the bad guy. Uh, oh, Miss Congeniality. Sandra Bullock was in it. Oh, well. Okay. Oh, Alex Norton. Hello again, guys. I'll watch previous Q&A videos to make it longer. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to do it, too. Awesome. Good suggestions. Uh, 2.03 p.m. Milk and tea forever. What's the benefit of tying, typing in DNS addresses manually in network settings? Uh, milk and tea forever. There's some very good reasons to do that. Um, one of the reasons is, well, the, the best reason is, is because the DNS that's being provided to you by the DHCP server is blicky. Um, so mm -hmm. for a right. lot of people, one of the things they're going to want to do is... is uh, their, their primary DNS, in many cases, let's say you have Active Directory. In that case, you're pretty much going to have to put 
your Active Directory server up as your number one DNS server. Right. Um, but a secondary, a lot of times people like to do public DNS servers. That's a lot of fun to do that and can speed things up. You go to 8.8.8.8 or 8.8.4.4 or all the variations thereof. Um, so that would be a couple of, of the good reasons. Also a good reason to, if you want to test things, I would manually throw in a DNS address if I'm, if I'm not sure about my current DNS server and I just want to see if there's a problem. So that would be another reason to uh, put a temporarily temporary static DNS in there. That's about it. Can you think of any, can you add to that? No, that would be the big reasons. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Jean Doraval, Demolition Man was Wesley Snipes and Stallone. Okay. And, William Jess, look at all these guys and, on and, top of it. And Sandra Bullock, you were right on that. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, no problem, Milk and Tea forever, always there. And at Milk and Tea, it's one of the things you should play with. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, like for example, uh, like I have a uh, Raspberry Pi hole here in my home network, and I don't want all my systems on that Raspberry Pi hole by definition. So my DHCP, okay. well, I guess I did change it. For a long time, my DHCP server did not pass out the DNS for the Raspberry Pi hole. I, I put them all in manually. Okay. But I just, I wanted to test, it was testing. Well, that's the whole point yeah. of having the fun and games. All right. JB is here, 2.04 p.m. JB. Cool. So everybody used to love that movie Demolition Man, my favorite scene in Demolition Man, where it's like, he doesn't know how to use the three shells to wipe his butt. And he, so every time you cursed, this little machine would give you a paper ticket. So he looks at a machine, he goes, I may not know how to use those three shells, but I'll be right back. That's pretty funny. See, even you laughed at that. See, you can I do did. this. I can, I, I can laugh. I can I, laugh. You can. All right. Uh, somebody with a very nice Cyrillic name says, hi, Mike. I say hi back to you. Oh, this, here, Scott, at 205. Yeah. Person with a Cyrillic name. Yes. I don't, re I certainly can't speak Russian, but I remembered that name. This person was on before. Excellent. I'm pretty sure. We'll see. Well. And then we have good old Kamal Gabanov, who is not Russian. We had to, I just remember he was not Russian, but he's here. Kamal, good to see you, man. Da -da -da -da. Oh dear, Nick had an interviewer saying she wanted to get to know the real me. Uh, okay, are you gonna look it up? I couldn't scroll too fast. You can, you know, you can scroll up. I, I know, I know. I'm just I throwing scroll that out. Up. Scrolling is a two-way street. You're gonna, you're gonna translate his name, and it's gonna come out as you know. Came out as did you know? Do you know? Do you know? Hi, Mike. Are are yeah? I don't know. That's cool. I don't know. So if you, Nick, don't worry about it. If you're doing well with the technical questions, that's usually ninety percent of the battle. So keep us posted, Nick. I want to see, I want to see you getting that job, man. So. If you haven't used it, I highly, and I assume you have a smartphone, download Google Translate. Free app from the App Store. I assume it's on Google Play too. Yes. Yes, okay. It's a Google app. <laughs> well, I only know well, the, have to I only know the download good. Download an APK from some questionable font website or something I like only that? know the good platform. So, oh, you just, know. Let's not even go there today. Why not? It's a slow day. <laughs> anyway, Google Translate is amazing. Not only will it do the written word where you can just point at something and go, oh, I want to translate from Russian to English and be able to see things like that, but it'll also do it in spoken. So for example, the convenience store around the corner from my house or near my house uh, has a, a, a bunch of, uh, it's run by a Pakistani family. Pakistan speaks a whole bunch of different languages or a whole bunch of different languages are spoken in Pakistan. And I asked the, the guy who speaks the best English, like, what language are you speaking? Because it doesn't sound like Urdu, because I have a friend who speaks that. Anyway, short story long, it was a totally different dialect. Urdu? She do. Urdu. Um, totally different dialect, spoken in one portion of Pakistan. Google Translate had it, 
and then I could actually walk in and say something into my phone, hold it up, and it would translate into that dialect for the person behind the counter. So it was all, hello, thank you, have a great day, until I actually memorized how to say those things. So Google Translate, good, good, good stuff. Apparently, the back of my head is distracting. Things got moved. I didn't touch anything, man. All right. So there we go. OK, so we, we have an interesting uh, issue here that's come up. And this is, uh, who said it? It's Kamal uh, Gorbanov. Hey, Mike, I cannot find local group and users in control panel. Yeah, Kamal, because Microsoft loves to change things like that. Kamal, do this. Go down to start run and type in MMC, Mike, Mike, Charlie, and you'll get a window that looks like this. Let me make that a little bit smaller so everybody can see this. Eh. This is the only big issue I have with this new layout, Scott, is it's really hard for me to show a screen grab. Here, check this out, guys. So if you type uh, MMC, this is the uh, Microsoft Management Console. So you type in MMC, and then to bring up uh, uh, local users and groups, just click on File, whoops, File, Add, Remove, Snap In. Oh boy, is it better be in there. This is so small, I can't read it. Local there it users is. and groups, yeah. I'm gonna add it. And it's like, just for this computer or for another computer, we're just gonna add it here, hit OK. And then, you can see all the users and the groups associated with that system. Nice. So you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, local users and groups is no longer directly accessible through the control panel through any way that I know. Right. But you can certainly do it through the MMC. Uh, and if you actually knew the name of the, the plugin, it's like yeah, LGUSRMS, well, yeah, something like that. I don't know. But the easy way to do it. Get, click on Start Run M M C Mike Mike Charlie, and then just do a add uh, add plugin, and it'll work just like and, we should. And what does M M C stand for, Mike? Oh God, Microsoft, Microsoft? Management Console. Excellent. Really? Yep. Wow, you got it. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> there was like 14 brain cells in the back of my brain that have been doing nothing for 12 years, sitting there smoking cigarettes. What? What? Oh. Microsoft, Microsoft Management Console, and they all go right back to sleep. <laughs> you got to do the like they're putting out their cigarette. Yeah, that, right. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. it. I got you. Yeah, you got to have that image. That's right. Because it's got to be comedy, man. <laughs> we used to do this for the music. Slag off. Uh, so, 206, Jean Dorival asks, Hey, Mike, why don't you guys do Microsoft certification courses anymore? Because we lost our shirt doing Microsoft certification courses, actually. Well, I mean, it, it, Sean, it depends what you're talking about. Um, we lack bandwidth. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. We're a fairly small company. Yeah. We, yeah. So we focus on the things that we can accomplish in a timely fashion and um, the way it goes. Hey, Jean, let's put it better than that. You want to do it for us? <laughs> I'll tell you what, you produce the book and the videos, and we'll give you, what, what's the cut? 10%. Well, sure, 7%. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's really all it boils down to. Jean is, uh, uh, so I can't say much about this other than this, is we did get some noise from CompTIA about a new A+. Can't say when, we can't give you any details at all, but I can tell you, well, I'm gonna just tell you anyway, that uh, CompTIA has told the back channel training providers that there's a new A plus coming. Which, you know. I mean, it's no great surprise, right? It's, right. We knew it was coming, but uh, you know. And they haven't actually fired the starting gun yet, right? No, I mean, we don't have any objectives or any, even any preview objectives yet, so. We'll get those hopefully sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, so it, uh, 207, Alex Norton asks, can you get virtual machines for the Raspberry Pi? And I can answer that. Go for it, because I don't, I don't know. Yes, so VMware is available for the Raspberry Pi, and there are other virtual machines as well. So just do some searches, and you should be able to come up with uh, 
mm -hmm. VM uh, virtualization software that will work with the Pi. So it's just Linux, right? So find virtual virtualization that'll work with Linux, and you should should run just fine. Cool. Keep yeah. going, man. You're okay. On the so road. 207, Andrew Parrish, Mike, what is the best type of steak, and why is it rare? <laughs> <laughs> I love the Andrew questions. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it rare? Well, it's more of a medium rare, but and either rare blue cheese, mushrooms on a steak. Yeah, I'll put a little something on a steak. A little salt, a little pepper. Poof, we're done. S and P, that's for me. Yeah. No, I like mushrooms. I'm, I and I can I can saute you some mushrooms, man. I can. Give me too. a little butter, a little garlic, a little red salt, a little red wine, and. Uh, I can make you some good mushrooms. Yeah, that's true. I have had your sauteed mushrooms, and they're quite delicious. All right, we got. Come on, we got. Okay, we only got we go. one hour to do it. You we guys, got, we got to hit it, buddy. Gregor's semantic. Semantic. You Says pronounce you guys, that like an American. I know, right? Because well, yeah. You guys think there's a new Windows America. coming? Just, there's always a new Windows coming. It'll always be Windows 10. Uh, yeah. And that's that's the thing. It's like each of these revs that Microsoft keeps doing would have been are almost as dramatic as a going from Windows 7 to Windows 8. Visually, not so much, but as far as like on inside. So just the the Christmas rev, for example, was a huge update over the rev from a year before. Microsoft is planning to continue doing that thing, just like Apple does that with with Mac OS. So. Yeah, I think I think they should never. I think they need to dump the Windows 10 moniker. They need to just go to Microsoft Windows. That's me saying it. Okay. Because the the day of the chunks is over now. It just you know. The, the day of the non evergreen update, where you go from a Windows 7 to a Windows 8. Right. To a Windows 9. Right. Oh, right. that's right. Windows 9 was only for the intelligent people. I forgot about that. There was no Windows 9. <laughs> Nothing like that here, folks. Dude, dude. You know, Tolwitz going to be sending me emails for like a week now. I know, I know. Uh, da -ba -da -ba. So I, I, I All right, so 208. Somebody was slamming me in here. Where did it go? 208, uh, Gino asks Mike, uh, just watched your video exploring the house that Todd built. Any plans? Good to, Lord. And I know, right? Any plans to go visit CompTIA anytime soon? No. I don't know. I mean, if, if Todd if Todd Thibodeau, the president of CompTIA, invited me again, I'd figure out a way to get up there. Sure. But you got to keep in mind, a lot of that technology, I feel bad for him. He was, he was running, like, first-generation HDMI hubs and stuff. So that's got to be like HDMI 1.1, yeah, which is not really functional anymore, right? For 4K or anything like that. Yep. I don't even want to guess. I mean, just the HDMI connections alone—that was five figures of equipment. And who runs HDMI cable in their walls? Todd Thibodeau did. Right. I and, know. Crazy uh, stuff. You know, it was impressive, to say the least. Oh, and. Uh, Dave mentions that there have been leaks about an actual Windows 11 that have floated out on the internet, but it, these are leaks. I mean, I don't know if that's going to be a. I've heard nothing to that extent. Okay. That doesn't mean Dave's wrong. It's just, you know, Dave has delusions of grandeur. So, uh, bye, Andre. Gino. <laughs> uh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I, I scrolled. Yeah, I'm going to say, I think you missed. I, I missed a whole bunch. I'm scrolling back up. Somebody was slamming me. I forgot who it was, but, you know. It doesn't matter. No, it's all good. I, it was Anthony Flores. It's all good. We'll get there. Anthony, give us, we're, we're getting there, buddy. We'll get there. So this is what's always interesting. So OB1 says, probably Pashtun. That's all it says. He probably talking, it wasn't actually Pashtun. It was, it was a dialect I'd never heard of. Um, Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and so I, I went home and looked it up and. That's what you get. Yep. For, you know, don't go doing that stuff. <laughs> you can talk about a southern come, accent come. versus a Maine accent or something. All right, so. 210, Alan Two, Duggan. 210, Alan Duggan. Hey, Mike and Scott. 
what is the purpose of problem-based questions in the CompTIA exams? They're performance-based questions, for one thing. Um, and they, they want you to do something, right? As if you're setting up a, a wireless access point. For real, they test you on, do you know the steps? And so it's a, a way of getting a practical, non-multiple choice component into the exam anyway. That's the nice answer. That is the nice The answer. real answer <laughs> is that CompTIA got literally, give me a politically correct term for bent over the table. Uh, 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 cajoled. Cajoled, all right. <laughs> CompTIA uh, was at a conference and I was there and CompTIA was uh, cajoled uh, by certain United States federal government entities that the CompTIA A plus in particular had no practical aspect to it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And that they were going to lose their DOD 8570 that would have lost their, you know, the European, the ISO 27,003, 27,001, I forget which one it is, doesn't matter. So uh, CompTIA had a lot of pressure to put more practical or what they call performance-based questions on the exam. And uh, I think it's a good idea to have them anyway, but uh, yeah, CompTIA was put into a half Nelson and told that they had to do that. It was a very strong suggestion. Yeah, they were cajoled. <laughs> Uh, all okay, right. so we're, at 210, 210, Ali Beck uh, Barnakulav says, hello, Mike. Thank you so much for your courses. It helped me and my little brother, who is 12, pass the CompTIA A-plus certification just recently. Excellent. Congratulations to you and your brother. That's awesome. That is awesome. And Kamal is using uh, study 1002. Uh -huh. Excellent, excellent. I saw that. All right. Uh, all right, I've gotten multiple people, Anthony Flores and people are complaining that they've never got their prizes. And I remember Anthony Flores was a few weeks ago. So Anthony, uh, one way, if, if Kathy is, is swamped and doing other things, she, she can get busy. You can always email me directly, scottj at totalsim.com, um, and say, hey, can you check with Kathy? I mean, we live just down the street from each other, so I can literally walk over to her house and go, hey, Kathy. Um, so that's one way to do it gently. Um, <laughs> or you I'm can, tired of people complaining. Or you can pull a president of Total Seminars on her and just call her directly on a live internet show. Hey, Kathy. What's going on? So I'm calling you about my buddy, Anthony Flores. And we're on the AMA right now, so you're live. I'm live. So okay. we're a little tongue-in-cheek here, OK? OK. I'm going to tell you Miss Kathy Yale, head of marketing and sales for Total Seminars. And I'm going to put my virtual big presidential finger on you. You get Anthony Flores his prize. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm there. I'm there. He's oh, going to get it. You hear it, Anthony? There. I, I've literally got Kathy Yale, the sales goddess of Total Seminars, has said, what? I'm sorry, what'd you say, uh, Kathy? I'm, you're, <laughs> you're cracking up. What'd you say? <laughs> He's going to get it. He's gonna get it. <laughs> you're going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy's from Michigan. I'm not sure what that means. But I think it means you're going to get your practice question. All right. Thank you, Kathy. I'm just goofing with you. Okay. All right. Bye. No, no problem. Boop. I <laughs> uh, can't take you anywhere. <laughs> hey, hey, Scott, come work for me. It'll be fun. <laughs> Let's start a training company. Uh, golly. There'll be people like Anthony Flores and Tolwit in our live for the, forever and ever. <laughs> but we also get the occasional, you know, Alice's and Patricia's, so that's good, too. <sighs> Man. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, all right. I'm on it, dude. There you go. I really. I'm going to put a smite button. <laughs> why don't Why don't people have that? Here, you guys want to make a lot of money? Put make a little fake keyboard button that says smite on it. I like it. That you can just stick on a keyboard someplace. Smite. <laughs> 
And then it has to play music like bum bum bum. I like it. Or, I like it. I'm trying to think what, what kind of music would a smite button play? What kind of tone? Volga Boatman? <laughs> I'm trying to come up with something here. I don't know. Wagner, come on. Wagner. Bum, 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 bum. There we go. You can call me Siegfried. I like it. All right, all right. Come on, get back. You know, we have questions here, Scott. A little decorum, please. Okay, all right, all right. Fine, fine. Gino watched the back of my head all day Monday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, David Mohan, I also see that you... I, I'm going to crack a whip on Kathy. We're going to get this going. I don't know why she's being a, a, a fart head on this, so we'll get it. Hey, Grandpa, Anthony Flores says, I got a job without getting A+. Plus. Dude, I have, I, I tell everybody, the number one thing is get a job. Certifications should be done on weekends and evenings. So at 2.13, uh, Rickle asks when <laughs> the uh, SY601 lecture videos are going to be released, specifically on Udemy. And... I'm, I'm assured that our video production team is, all the, all the shooting is done. It's purely in post-processing right now. They're all working 60, 70 hours. And more than that, they're week. already preloading the videos. Right. So I know they're, this, this is days it, away. Yeah, Im imminent, imminent. But again, we still have through the end of July to take 501. That's true. So those of you who are still studying for 501. You're you okay. Just make sure you're done. Month. Yeah, you got, just make sure you get it cleared up at the end of next month. Right. Uh, and Gino, uh, okay, they're going to release A plus sometime in the fall or in the spring, but that means that the current 1001, 1002 exams will go all the way six months after that. So you have more than a year. No rush. Uh, crazy homebody girl can't stand mushrooms. Oh well. She seems so nice otherwise. I know. You know? Oh, wow. <sighs> okay, so, uh, Allie Beck. Um, We're going to have to take down all those surveillance photos of her that we took. All right, so here. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Why do you say things like this? My heart, my heart. I can't stand it, Ben. Uh, come on, okay, come so Allie Beck, on, Beck has several questions uh, about him and his 12-year-old brother. And Allie Beck is only 15, by the way. Our 13 year old brother. All right, well, there we just so, dropped a PG right there, didn't we? We did. All right. We did. What do they do now? How do they get jobs? Can they get internships? No. Yeah, so this is, this is going to be an interesting thing. Um, I'm going to tell you go. there, there, there's two ways that you could go here. One of the ways that you could go that could be fascinating and fun is I don't know where you guys are physically located. If you're in the United States, I would tell you to hang your own shingle to start your own business. Here in the United States, it's trivial to start your own business. And, you know, I th literally make some terrible business cards. They don't even have to be good business cards. Make them out of eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper, or A2 paper, whatever they use in Europe. And uh, go knock on some doors in your neighborhood. People love young people with guts. Don't do you? Don't Absolutely. You do? Absolutely. And like some kid comes knocking on your door and they're selling candy bars for band or, you know, I always, I, I'm, I'm the biggest sucker for good salesmanship. I can't tell you how many things I've purchased in my life simply because the salesperson was amazing. And as a young person like that, to show the chutzpah, to get out there and knock on some doors, I think you would be very pleasantly surprised at the result. The problem is, is for most people, it, for anybody, not just young people, but for anybody, to, to, to hang that shingle the first time, to start your own business, you, you have, uh, what do they call it? I'm a fake, I shouldn't be doing this. Uh, there's a term for There it. is, uh, the something. Imposter syndrome. Yeah. So you get a bad case of imposter syndrome. I need to warn you, if you have an A-plus certification, you're already smarter than 85% of all the other techs out there. Uh, and that includes the ones with 10 years of experience. So you would be surprised how much good you can do uh, as a young person like that. Th that would be one thing. The other thing I would ask you to look at into, especially, and I, I got to use the United States as the uh, descriptor, is in your schools. So if you're as young as 12, God, that's 13, 13 and 15. 13 and 15. So they're uh, middle schoolers. 
uh, starting in high, the high school. school. Yeah. Uh, most schools now are starting some kind of program to allow you guys to do first level support. Uh, 10 years ago, this was rare. 15 years ago, it didn't exist. But now you see a lot of schools where they have students who actually provide first line support, you know, turning the computer on and off again and running anti-malware and things like that. Please take a look at those things. I think you would find those interesting. I mean, the nice part about being as young as you are is that you have plenty of time to still think that Band-Aids are free, okay? Uh, so enjoy this time. Uh, and then when you turn 18, 19 years old, uh, you, you, you'll have a, a, a bigger discovery. But at this point, I would consider either one of those two routes. And, and if you pick the first route, one of the kind of things that you could uh, sink your teeth into would be the PC tune-up for a set fee of 25 or 50 bucks or whatever. Just a PC running slowly, let the, the, the dynamic teen duo come and do diagnostics and make your machine run faster. Right? So all you'd do is go, you'd run disk cleanup, you'd run some diagnostic utilities, you'd make sure they're get to clean up various things. I mean, we, we could talk on Discord about specific things to go through, but why not? You yeah. have nothing to lose. So we are talking about stakes again. We got to the point where I was talking about stakes. Yeah. Well, Doug Hall says medium is the correct answer. Oh, Doug, Doug. I think Doug is like from one of those weird states like Pennsylvania or, you know, where they don't, they're not allowed to have the good food. Oh, right that's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah. So it's okay. It's all right, Doug. We understand. And, and then, of course, Ohio had to chime in here with ketchup on a well done steak. Was, oh, that is Dave Rush? <laughs> <Yipe>. <laughs> this, is, this is why, like, never waste a good bottle of wine on Dave Rush, you know? Uh, that's true. Because he's going to put a straw in it, you know? So pretty much guaranteed. After the, or after the AMA is all, all 24 7, uh, we, Total Seminars, does not have a Discord channel. There is, however, an unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel called the unofficial, unofficial. Total <laughs> Seminars Discord <laughs> channel, channel run by our friend Jose Braden uh, at 222. Dave Rush, senior instructor for Total Seminars, who's the moderator for our forum here, uh, posted the link to Discord. This is a great place to click in, go into voice and, and video, chat with your fellow AMA people and other techs, uh, chat with us. Uh, we, we tend to show up there as well. Or if you don't want to chat and you just want to leave a message, you know, just drop a message in there. Right, so it's, a, uh, it's fun. Like, or like if a lot of people who are hitting me with repair things, it's very hard for me to help with repairs either on this channel or I, I can do it through email too, but I'd rather be doing it on this Discord channel. Right, because then we can do asymmetrical support when we're and doing like specific repair questions coming up in the chat. It's like, uh, can I do this quickly and effectively? And it's much better if we actually have a, a, a few minutes to at least digest the question, think about different possibilities, and then post a more uh, coherent and uh, thoughtful answer. So Discord's a great place for that. Yeah, so please check out the Discord channel. Absolutely. I, I can't be on there today. I, you're not going to be able to get on there either, are you? Not today. But we'll be on there Monday and, of course, Friday for Dave Rush's AMA. Before I say anything else, I want to get this out real quick. Big Mike at 2.19 p.m. Just dropping in. He completed the 220-1002 today. Pass. I want to say thanks. Go get a job, buddy. Well done, Big Mike. Mike, awesome. Yeah. Congrats, man. Round of applause. Right Absolutely. Round of applause. Absolutely. I didn't get a rump from that, man. A rump. <laughs> Keep it PG. Keep it PG. <laughs> got, we got 12 and 15 year olds in here, man. 13 and 15. Whatever. So we can go PG 13. <laughs> oh my God. What? Nick Pothis just came up with the best name for Windows ever 1217. Windows Eternal. Oh, very nice. What was that group? It's 3 a.m. It's 3 a.m. Okay. Ancients of Zulu. KLF. KLF is going to rock you. Oh, God. I, just, I don't even know why I even bring up, you know, oh, let's talk about, you know, oh, the original Shakespeare, you know, Moriarty. Well, you know, wait, that would be different. But, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Scott? <laughs> KLF. It was a great group. They wore raincoats. I'll, I'll take your word for it. They Mike. did. I, I, I will take your word for it. And I'm sure you found a lot of pleasure in them.
Boop, beep. KLF. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now it's stuck in my brain. Okay, it's been a great show. <laughs> KLF is going to rock you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's already 2.35, dude. Okay, uh, 2.19, Jean Dorival, has anyone ever used the CompTIA Cert Master CE to, to renew a cert? Supposedly, supposedly renews your cert automatically in hours. Yes, uh, we've seen folks do it. Um, it, 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 I, I, is this different than the renewal, the CE no. renewal thing? Is he doing something different? They all renew in hours. I'm, I'm not sure, Jean, what you mean by that, brother. It's, uh, they all pretty much work that way. I guess if you're going through the Cert Master program, you have to log in with your CompTIA account, and then for if you pass it, it just automatically does it, or if you use anybody else's, you have to type it in. Okay. That's all that means. Okay. Yes, Jean, it, it works fine, but you can do that with all kinds of stuff. It's not unique just to the Cert Master. So Alex is here, popped in at, at some point, at least saying hi to Elbow, who's also here. Alex uh, is here? Yeah. Alex Jager? Alex Jager from my sophomore engineering class at Texas A&M? No. Oh. Alice Pazzi. Uh, All the way from Italy. Excellent. Excellent. We have people looking in. I, I know. Did you see that? I did. They, they were looking in. They're like, what are those two weird dudes Who aren't doing? wearing pants. Because we're not. Because we don't have to. As long as we don't stand up and move around. I think we look cute in matching shorts like this. Yeah. Yeah. Cute. That's the word. Yeah, cute. All right, now we're all tired. Now we're all terrified. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, our Dean. I'm feeling like it. I feel like two two twenty two. I'm reading it. Okay. I fixed a I fixed a family member's Outlook because it wasn't allowing typing into a body of a new because of a new update. Reverted back to. Well done. You know that. Uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, for the record, uh, 12 years old is about the youngest I've ever heard anybody pass the A+. Plus. I think 12 is the record. Frank came up with a, remembered the um, command. Oh, that's right. L-U-S-M-G-R dot M-S-C. That's it. R-M-G-R dot M-S-C. L-S. L-U-S. Local user manager dot M-S-C. Thank you, Frank. Uh, I used to have all my MSCs memorized. I've... I've Honestly, you know what did it is when they finally got task manager to the point where it was usable, you know, I, I stopped going into that stuff as much. Now we know. Anthony Flores. Is Kim Jong Oof? Yeah. You That's wacky what... prankster, you. <laughs> you you, you sketcheteer. You'd, you'd figure that with the hi, Grandpa. <laughs> oh, I didn't put two and two together. I didn't either. I didn't I did either. Not. All right. <laughs> All right, Senor Flores, you've got me again. There'll be a little something in your mail, that's for <laughs> sure. Uh, this is excellent French coffee, by the way. Yeah, uh, extremely good French coffee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mama. Or I should say, may we? Okay, come on, Scott, we got 20 minutes. Okay. Buddy. I want to make sure we get everybody's questions knocked out. All right, so David Mohan at 226 says, is port security and ACLs, access control lists, similar. Sorry, I'm still trying to figure out uh, what Frank was talking about, setting the control panel to small icons. I mean, uh, you would see users even with large icons. Hang on. Or it's... There's a difference here. See, I get user accounts in control panel, whether I have large icons or small icons. So Frank, I get, I worry sometimes when we tell people to use large or small icons in control panel, there could be some versioning issues that come into play. But absolutely all glory to Frank for reminding us it's L-U-S-R-M-G-R dot M-S-C. Did you know that used to be an A-plus question? It isn't anymore. No, nope, not anymore. It used no. to be a billion years ago. Yep. So uh, David Mohan, is port security and access control list the same thing or similar? No. Uh, so access control list is a generic term that defines 
what accesses can be done to usually an entire network. Okay. So, for example, a firewall would have an access control list. Or, I, no, I shouldn't say a network, or, or, a, or a service. How does that sound? Okay. Because uh, we can set up an ACL for uh, logging into a uh, Active Directory domain, right? You can have a list of usernames and passwords. That's an ACL. Um, although that's, yes, I'm sticking to that. That's an ACL. And whereas, what was the other one? Ports? Uh, port security? Port security. Okay, so port security, port security has to do with how you secure individual physical ports on switches and things like that. For example, one thing you would do with port security is that you could set it up so that uh, if you don't have the right MAC address, you cannot plug into this port. That would be one example. Mm -hmm. Now, there could be an ACL uh, can, with that to help make that happen. Right. And that's as good as that answer could be right there. I don't, okay. I don't think I need to develop that anymore. Okay, sounds good. You know me, Scott. I ask me what time it is. I'm going to tell you how to build a clock. There we go. So Mateo Rio has an interesting question. I on couldn't it. believe that I didn't know that was Kim jong Oof. I should have solely... <laughs> that kid got me, man. And that's not the first time he's got me either, is it? I, you know. I'm on to you, mister. <laughs> now, so it's a, Mateo, Mateo, now it's Mateo, personal. Mateo Rio has a, a, a detailed question about component services and a very specific error, error code. It, it, regardless of how good we are as techs, doing this on the fly, on the air, it just can't happen. This is a great question, Mateo, for Discord, because people who are willing to do some research and are interested in the question could probably point you in the right direction, uh, but it's going to take any of us research to do a specific error code on component services. Exactly, and that, that's the weird, that's where, well, where is, where's the question? Show it to me. No, seriously. <laughs> 226. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, Discord's a great spot. Yeah, and even on Discord, Mateo, we're going to be able to probably maybe get you started on that. But the first thing I would do is I would literally take as much of the exact error code as I possibly can and Google search it with quotation marks. Trust me, you're not the first person to run into this, especially with component services. So, Mateo, are you, are you going into component services to support a database? What you doing in there, Willis? That's what I'm really asking. Right. Mateo, come join the Discord channel. It, it, literally, this is exactly it. Okay. Okay, so, Elba, what? I'm just friendly today. Well, you are. Friendly. You're just you're just all touchy, feely. Mm. <laughs> mm. Watch it. <laughs> Elbo says he's starting his own tech YouTube channel. What? I know. That's exactly what Alex said too. She's like, "Are you are you joking?" Because Elbow, infamously, he's been on since like the first AMA. For three minutes. But he shows up and he goes, has lunch, and he has a job, and, you know, come on. He's doing, the man's doing what the man can do. That's right. But he, he's also infamous for refusing to join the Discord channel. Right? And now he's going to open his own YouTube station. I like it. His own YouTube channel. No, because we're going to discover that Elbow's actually this wildly intelligent, you know, like, raccoon or... Something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's hey, great. Hey, we could do that in a movie, like have a really smart raccoon. Really? Who maybe had like a, I don't know, a rocket launcher. No. Uh, yeah, that would never fly. Nobody yeah, who would believe would, it. Who would buy that? I don't know. Next thing you know, you're going to be putting all your gems on a, I don't know, glove. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I believe in our people today. I believe that people want intellectual stuff. Okay, so three, 237. I'm sure I skipped things, but what can I say? Uh, what is the best, uh, Fox 21, what is the best way to become a good computer programmer according to your perspective and experience? Dive in over your head and, and try not to drown. I'm, I'm serious, I mean. Take classes, uh, that's, that's my perspective. Well, I'm not against taking classes on anything, of course, Scott, but you know, there's a certain point where once you get the core pieces together, and we're talking programming here. We're not talking, yes, generically on all things, it's always good to take classes. But uh, in programming in particular, like we get a lot of people who ask questions like, okay, Mike, uh, we had a question on Monday where a person came in and it's like, uh, give me a bunch of labs for Active Directory. And it's like, I, you know, I, I can't do that because 
somebody who's just starting Active Directory, maybe we could just have them, you know, maybe spin up a new forest or, you know, or, or change their global catalog server or make a new user, right. uh, reconfigure their DNS or something like that. But that would be as far as the lab goes. To tell somebody to go click here, click here, click here isn't going to work. It just, it just doesn't work. Where were we going with this? I totally lost track uh, of where I'm at. Uh, how to become a good programmer. Oh, so for programming, I think, it, I think it's even more true. For programming, create things you need to do and you right. will make it happen. Um, you know, especially for coding, most coding today is finding other people's code, which is public and free to use, da da da, mm -hmm. and then plugging it into your code and make things happen. So my first Python course that I took was learn Python through games as in making games. So we started with, of course, the traditional Hello World, which you, every programming thing starts with. Uh, but then we, we did um, Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock, which is, it was a totally fun little programming exercise. And it turns out there's 500 different ways to do that in Python. And everyone commented on the way I did it. And, they were like, why did you do it that lame way, that inefficient way? And I'm like, what? This is my first course. Anyway, but, but by having something that I like to do, gaming, be the focus of my programming, it gave me something to do to be able to practice all these different things and then get the feedback to, to refine it. And that's just the process. So anyway, fun stuff. Well, there it is. Oh, my God, 1995 Texas Aggie. Keep your scroll. I'm just going... Weird places. Okay. Where is Spewy? Guys, I have bad news. Spewy died. What? Spewy. You totally did not tell me. Spewy went to the big kitty litter bin in the sky. Wow. The cat was almost 20 years old. Which for a cat know? is really old, yeah. And uh, she was taken to the vent and the vet's like, I'm not going to do anything to this cat. Yeah. You know, there's, it's time to give her some good food and a, a nice warm place to sleep and just let her go. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah sorry guys, Spewy is gone. Uh, Jack and Margo are still fine. Uh, they're now living about 100 miles east of here. So we are catless, decatted, cat free. The problem is, is I love animals. I just love giving them back to their owners. <laughs> right, you know? right. Cats and children. Yes, they're very fun to play with. And extremely intelligent raccoons. <laughs> So yeah, awesome. No, no more spewy. So Mateo, while we were talking, uh, discovered his, uh, figured out what he did, and solved his problem. So there you go. Just asking the question was enough to lead you to the no, solution. No, no. There's a name for this. It's called technical healing. <laughs> right? Something, something isn't working until you put it in front of the technician, and then it suddenly cures itself. This is a real thing. It also it, happens with automobiles. It, it is. Yeah. I take my car into the shop and go, see, it's making this noise. And we, the mechanic gets in, and we drive it around the block. And he goes, you're welcome? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. And if anybody wants to do T-shirts for the Mike Myers channel, you have my blessing to do it. Um, and I just, believe it or not, I super scroll. Uh, oh, wait, it's, David, it's, Mo, I'll let you, I'm, I saw one, so go ahead. I'll let you dig. Go ahead. Uh, David Mohan's asking, where to go, where to go, where to go, where to go. I, God bless it. Difference between VNC and RDP? Yeah, I lost it. 247. I'm still losing it. Ah, there it is. Uh, okay, so uh, VNC is its own protocol. VNC is its own thing. RDP is remote desktop protocol, which at port 3389, Lots of different things can use it. In fact, VNC can even use 3389. I'm not sure, what is the default port for VNC? I don't, I don't remember. I don't know. Yeah, so VNC has its own port numbers. It's, it doesn't use RDP. Uh, ba -ba -ba. It uses port 5900, uh, 5900 or 5800. So. You know, VNC is a piece of software, what we used to call real VNC, or sometimes here you called tight VNC. You remember mm -hmm, that name? Mm -hmm. uh, so these are just, they're all just forks of the same piece of code of remote access software code. Same animals. 
but Tide VNC pre it predates remote desktop protocol. I'm pretty sure it does. It's old. It's old. old. Okay, I'm not. Old I'm, not so, I'm not so sure. I'll well, I'm not so that. sure either because that's okay. why I'm saying it with all these. <laughs> well, you're right. <laughs> Maybe sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but the big thing is that VNC uh, is doesn't use. Uh, 3389 by default, but I'm pretty sure that you can configure VNC servers to listen in on 3389, and then it, hmm. it, it would work that Interesting. way as well. But once they're both up and running, they look pretty much the same. You got a copy of somebody else's desktop running in a window on your machine. Gotcha. Cool. Uh, what do we have going here? We have 10 minutes, man. We have 10 minutes. Teacher Russell, I love kids. Teaching kids is so rewarding and so gratifying. Handing them back to their parents at the end of the day, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So at some point, we'll have to come up with, uh, if you're still having trouble, Elbow, you can always ask on Discord and people will come up with names. Oh, but you'd have to join Discord for that to happen. Yeah, you'd have to join Discord <laughs> and then we'd see that you're actually in an Incredibly intelligent, intelligent killer whale. Oh, a bit of a raccoon. With lasers. Lasers. Throw me a bone, people. <laughs> some freaking lasers. Maybe some, some ill-tailored sea bass. <laughs> Ill-tempered sea bass. Yeah, really? I like, I like, you never even watched any Mike Myers? Ill-tempered sea, sea bass. bass. Really? So he. So, so you first said ill-tailored. I got I'm, I'm, right, So you know, you're the one who's pouring all the uh, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. And now Kathy's on. Kathy's on because you called her out. I <laughs> did, you know, because she messing with, with my man. And, uh, Kim Jong oof. <laughs> Kim Jong oof. There are seven haircuts allowed. Um, <laughs> All of them require the same bowl. <sighs> Teacher Russell, I love kids. You were much. I like kids too, fried, baked, you know. Okay, so let me tell you about Friday, since we're about to <laughs> go off the air here shortly. Um, Friday, 2 o'clock, daylight, central, central Daylight Savings Time. Dave Rush does his uh, Dave Rush Ask Me Anything, or drama. And it's uh, Dave is the senior instructor for Total Seminars uh, and a brilliant tech in all kinds of levels. And an excellent phlebotomist. Yes. He can point to things on your head. You actually know what phlebotomy is. Of course I do. Ah. It was the medicine of my forefathers. It was, yeah. <laughs> that was trepanning. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Friday, 2 p.m., same channel, Total Seminars channel on YouTube. Dave Rush does his, his Ask Me Anything. And it centers on the Raspberry Pi, which is a totally slick little machine for running Linux. So it, we go, he goes through uh, Linux things that are useful for a, studying A+, Network+, Security+, and just because it's cool. So join us on Friday, 2 p.m., Total Seminars channel for Dave Rush. At the Coliseum. Be there. Be there. Or Friday, be. Friday, Friday. Or be square. So I got to tell you, you know what I miss? What? More than anything else? I'm deadly serious. Monster truck rallies. I used to go with the big monster trucks and the one with the huge dinosaur that would eat the cars. Oh, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. And we used to go to the, uh, the Astrodome. And they it would have, yeah, I'm just saying. Okay. Why do you keep yacht sighing at me? Is this sign language that you're doing to me? <laughs> oh, good God, Scott Kasser Jernigan. His middle name's Kassart. Why are you named after a female impressionist painter? Mary Cassatt. Oh, it's Cassatt. Not Cassatt. <laughs> Never mind. So, uh, to give a half a congratulations to uh, Joshua uh, Echevarria. Echevarria. There we go. See? How about that? I rolled my R's. Nice. Uh, so, tengo mustachio y muy guapo. Si, sí, como no. Uh, past 1001 on the 5th. That's awesome. 1,002, that you've, already, you've already scheduled. Well done, so well done, Joshua. Let us know how you do. Good luck. <laughs> Teacher Russell, WC, only if they're properly cooked. Yes. 
On the whole, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. Uh, that was a quote from somebody called W.C. Fields. Mm-hmm. I swear to God, are we from the same planet? <laughs> I want to see your blood. <laughs> it's green, I like know all of my kind. <laughs> <laughs> what is the thing where the Vulcans every seven years have to go back to the ham planet and get it on? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Mating? I, I yeah, the clock nar or something. Where's Toloit when I need him? <laughs> uh, uh, Pond Far, thank you, William Jeske and Andrew Hutz. All right, David, whatever Kathy says to do so that you can get your prize, just do it. Panfar, yeah. Panfar. <laughs> Everybody else remembered. No, we only had two people remember. And Dave. In the back channel. Yeah. And Doug okay. now. No. Three. Four. Okay. So we got four minutes. Guys, if you have any more questions, this is it. We, we, we have a short day today. Very sorry about that. We've got, uh, actually, to be honest oh. with you, we're in a panic on Network Plus. Put up your contact information. Uh, I can do this. You can do this. I don't, I don't even need any help. Okay, here I Although am. Although a reminder. I'm putting up my contact. There it is. All right, so if you have questions and you're like, oh, I forgot to get them in fast enough before Mike and Scott had their short day on Wednesday, just email Mike right here at michaelm at totalsim.com. You can also email me. I'm not quite as quick as responding as Mike is uh, at scottj at totalsim.com. Uh, anyway, email your questions and We'll, we'll answer them here on air. Absolutely. Okay. I'm punching button number one. Hit it. Nice. We... Look at you. You're so trainable. I know, right? It's absolutely amazing. I love our new ATEM Mini Pro. It does very cool things. I feel like we're all studioed up here, you know? We, you know, we kind of are. Well, if nothing else, I mean, the image quality is outrageous with yeah. this new camera. Yep. Absolutely. Because everybody wants to see all the pores on my nose. Well, of course. <laughs> God didn't make me pretty, Scott. <laughs> if you can't be handsome, be handy. There you go. Fox 21, anyone for South African wine? What kind of wine do we drink when we're in South Africa, Scott Jernigan? Pinotage. Pinotage. And you have to say it just like that. That's Pinotage. Right. Pinotage. Like that. <laughs> they, we're completely sober, guys. That's, that's true. We're, we're drinking water. I mean... It's fun to make it out like it's all crazy, but uh, you bring it out in me. I, you know, it is. And as it's Alex, the matching long as underwear. As Alex says at 257, it's always Scott's fault. Right? Right. I've made it so much easier. I'm going to put that on a mug. <laughs> or in the Total Seminars t-shirt line. That's right. <laughs> uh, we that's gotta, awesome. We, we, the, the questions are definitely done. Okay, guys, okay? I think we are wrapping up. I am sorry that we had to cut it out a little early today. It is for a good cause. Uh, Network Plus, we are moving so fast, we will not have a delay on Network Plus. It will come out quickly, and we're working very hard to make sure that happens. And now, uh, yes, Andre, we're drinking water, man. Don't, don't sign off yet. JB, congratulations. What did he do? He passed the A+. Plus. Oh, well done. Well done, JB. That's awesome. Well done. That's well done. awesome. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> I know, Alex, a new t-shirt. If you can't be handsome, be handy. I'm telling you, William Jeske, man, I'm telling you. He's, he's funny. A, he's a funny guy. Yeah. And he knows my line of humor. I mean, he, which which is kind of scary. Which much better. Which is very scary, He's yes. probably my brother or something in here. All right, guys, we absolutely have to go. Thank you so much. Be sure to check in on uh, the Discord channel. You know, keep in mind, the Discord channel is always available, but people tend to drop in usually after the AMAs for live chat kind of stuff, but that doesn't mean you can't throw a, just throw a question in there anytime you want. Uh, also keep in mind to like and subscribe to the channel. It's always greatly appreciated. It helps with the, really the, helps us get found easier on YouTube. We, we, money I don't give her anything about. But, uh, uh, but I think that's about it. Are we all good? You're typing stuff. Participate, if I could actually spell, I can't see what I'm typing. <laughs> So they have these things called glass. Oh, there you go. All right, guys, we are out of here. Y'all have a great uh, week. I will be back on Monday. And until then, later, Tata. Good night. Bye-bye. How do we?